Okay, hello, hello. I'm so excited to bring you this episode. I have a friend, a dear friend and client on today with me. Her name is Melanie Randall. Melanie has been one of my OG students inside some of my very first programs, including Move Girl and more recently, uh, Wholehearted Manifestation, which is being rebranded and renamed into Shameless Manifestation, which I'm very excited about, and it's launching very soon. So I wanted to bring Melanie on to talk a little bit about her life and her experience with this work. Um, and now just for a little bit more of an introduction, Melanie is a teacher, uh, a dance coach, and also a, an entrepreneur. Uh, she's got a new little side hustle going on, and I'll let her tell, tell you more about that when we get into the conversation. But welcome, welcome, Melanie. Thank you for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. I, did you want me to start with an introduction right away? You just go, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say, give us a little something. Yeah. So, um, like Millie said, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for 20 years, 21 years, but it flies by. Um, I'm also a mom. I have three boys and a grandson too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and just actually, um, bought a house and blended a family so I'm kind of moving to that stepmom role too which is fairly new old and then new again long story um but uh yeah I just um I guess about two years ago I started following Millie on social media and I I just um was attracted to your energy right away. And I knew that I was stuck in my life and kind of, I guess in a rut kind of like personally, okay. uh, the pandemic had just started and um, I, you know, I felt kind of lonely and I felt stuck. I was living in a rental apartment. I was doing the same old job <laughs> that I had been doing for so long. And as much as I love it, you know, you can only do the same thing for so long before it becomes monotonous, even though the students are always new and wonderful and different. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I, I just felt the opportunity, your opportunity calling to me and I, I just had to take advantage. Yeah. I think that the timing was like really, you know, integral there. So in your life, like cut meeting up into this moment, what do you think brought you to this place of feeling stuck and feeling like in a rut? Uh, I guess I had stopped setting goals for myself, personal goals, um, professional goals. I just, I thought this is it. Like you, Melanie, you have your career, you have your family you know, I was, I have two disabled parents that I take care of sometimes. And I just, uh, I thought, you know, I kind of thought, well, this is it, you're settled. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you're just, this is, this is life now, this is your routine. Mm -hmm. And then the routine became uncomfortable. And I thought, I'm, you know, like, I, I just, I can't, I can't think of any other word to describe it than to say stuck mm -hmm. because I just did feel stuck and I was stuck in this level of discomfort and I've always been introverted. I've never been really one to reach out to others for help or support, but there was something about your program that was calling out to me that gave me the inner uh, strength the motivation to, you know, reach out. And actually your husband had, had said something too, because I had commented on one of his posts and he's like, you need my wife, Millie. <laughs> I don't know what I, I don't remember what I said, but I, I had said something about, ah, oh, you're li living my dream life, you know? And, and I think junior for me is sort of an expander. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, 
I thought, well, I've been following Millie for a while, but I've never reached out to her. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that was something that I never normally would have done. But I thought the discomfort of staying where I was, Mm. was so much tougher than going for something new. Yeah. And then the fear maybe of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm a researcher too, right? So I like to have as much background information about something as I possibly can have before I take that first step, that (laughs) tiptoe. I won't even call it a leap yet because it wasn't, but uh, yeah, but I didn't, I, for some reason I, I, it was calling to me. And when something is calling to you, you don't feel like you need to, um, you know, dip your toe in, you can just go for it. Right. So that's you listening to your intuition, right? Which was one of the first things that I learned from you because I thought that I didn't have intuition. You I said, I, I remember you saying that and I was like, oh no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> but it was your intuition that brought you to the program, right? You, and, and you just, you felt a pull and that's what intuition is really. It's like a pull towards something. And when we love something, when something lights us up, when we, we in, internally, we just know that something is going to be right for us. That's when we feel it. Right. And sometimes mm-hmm. it screams loudly. Sometimes it whispers, but I think that the fact that, you know, you listen to it is so courageous and I think that that's what's required for change is is a lot of courage right so coming into the program did you have any hesitations no the the first program move girl um no I think my only hesitation at the time was you know, could I afford it? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Which turned into later on learning, am I worth it? Right? Which of course, we all are. Uh, It's just a matter of, you know, like, I had the money. Mm -hmm. It's sitting there, it's kind of earmarked maybe for a family member or for, you know, something that I was saving up for or whatever it may be. And then I thought, do I do I really want to spend my money on this kind of self-help type of program that I really don't know that much about? Yeah. And I think that was the only hesitation. And then I th- just thought, um, and I, I'm sure it was something that you said, you told me, you said, you're worth it. You don't need to wait. You, Cause I said, Oh, I'll do it the next round. I'll, I'll join in the next round. And yeah. you said, you don't need to wait if you're, you know, you're call if it's calling to you now. And honestly, it's the, the best investment that I could have made in my, in myself and in my life for, for me and for my family as well. And even for my students. Yeah. The ripple effect is, is so huge. And I think it's just a matter of, um, people really realizing that, right? It's not just a selfish thing. It's not just about your, you know, self-help. It's about really making an external, you know, ripple um, because your energy affects everybody in your life. You know, you feel it when you walk into a room when somebody is not feeling awesome, they're in a bad mood. So why wouldn't you want to give the gift not only to yourself, but to, to other people in your life too, to be at a, a better place within yourself. Um, and you also went on to join, you know, my next program, which, which is now referred to, which is now being called shameless manifestation. Um, and going into this next, uh, you know, layer of personal development, mm-hmm. I feel like you've just blossomed in this <laughs> incredible way, because you, like you were saying, like you're, you were, you had the tendency to be a very introverted person, right? And and you, your confidence and just the the shine, like you're shining in this way that's coming through, um, like in your Instagram and your online presence. I don't I don't remember what your online presence was really too much before. Is, is it because there wasn't much of one, or am I just not remembering? Uh, it was probably mostly just pictures of my kids. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> before I didn't post a lot about myself because I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't at the center of my own life. 
Mm -hmm. And I was, I was on the sidelines. I was doing what I was quote unquote supposed to do. And, uh, you know, and being a provider and being a single mom and being there, being a daughter and being there to support other people. So everything I felt like I was focusing on everything externally. Mm -hmm. And so my, my social media presence was really about, um, the world through my eyes but not my world if that if that makes sense I don't know yeah Yeah, it does I think a lot of women will relate to exactly what you said about kind of being on the sidelines in your own life and I think that a lot of women like they never end up in the family photos because they're always the ones taking the photos right exactly um and I like what you said there about being the center of your own life So what has changed for you since you've made that shift and had your, you know, your locus go from outside of yourself to back inside of yourself and and what's changed in your life since doing that? It's two things really, and they're interconnected. So the confidence piece is huge and the confidence comes from self-acceptance accepting all of the parts of yourself, all of the qualities of yourself, all of your past, all of your present, all of your future, the things that you want, uh, you know, not feeling guilty about those things. Mm -hmm. And just, um, yeah, just that a sense of worthiness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for example, uh, I remember doing one of the very first worksheets in wholehearted manifestation and it was who are you and I just wrote down all these lists of traits and I I'm not sure if this is being the teacher in me (laughs) but I listed them it as like good traits and bad traits in two columns and you know like the one was um you know I'm kind okay and then on the other column it said I was but I'm impatient and I, I thought, okay, so I'm looking at this list and I'm saying, this is BS. Mm-hmm. Why am I sorting these, these traits, these qualities into good versus bad? I'm not a half good, half bad person. There's, I'm not, you know, I am the two sides of the same coin for sure. We all are, but I just, I couldn't, I just, I thought this is awful. This is Mm -hmm. awful that I'm categorizing myself this way. Why would I do that to myself? Mm -hmm. And I thought I'm, I'm worth so much more than that. So I can, I can say, okay, maybe I'm impatient, but that means that I go after what I want more quickly, Mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe I'm not great with money, but that's a goal that I could set for myself to save more money. And then when I achieve that goal, I'm going to feel amazing. Mm -hmm. So I started to take all of these things about myself that I had seen as negative and flip them around Mm -hmm. to either setting goals or where can I find the good in this? And from there came this confidence that, Hey, I am who I am and I'm a capable strong woman who's been through a lot of life challenges and I've accomplished so much I've survived a lot and I'm worthy of more I'm worthy of what I have now I'm worthy of what I want and you know kind of who cares if some people like me some people don't like me or Mm -hmm. you know if not all of my qualities are amazing. Not everybody's perfect. No, nobody's perfect. And so why would I focus on these bad things? Just accept them, accept that I have some quirks or, or yeah. shortcomings and, and just, and, and love who I am anyway, in I spite of them and because of them. Yes. And I like exactly what you said. It's like almost the reframe there of like, it doesn't even have to be bad or negative, right? Like when you said impatient and and what does that mean? I'm more driven to go after things quickly, you know? So there's always like a flip side of it um, that we can just change our lens. And my next question for you is how do you feel like 
I'm just going to refer to it as shameless manifestation, not to confuse people, but how do you feel shameless manifestation was able to help you undergo this transformation? What about the program made it happen? Would you say? The definitely the readings, the evidence uh, is a big part of it. So when, um, you know, reading, reading the books, reading the articles, watching the YouTube videos that we found, listening to you and you sharing your knowledge and your research and your background, I find that just really opens my eyes to new ways of looking at things. Mm -hmm. The support, the one-on-one -on -one Voxer support that, that I have with you and with the other women in the group, you know, in the program, in the container, um, I find that so valuable. You, we tend as women, I think, to be, uh, to feel really isolated, that mm -hmm. we're the only ones going through something. Um, and, you know, especially, especially moms, especially single moms, especially, um, you know, as working moms who, who are, you know, just stuck running back and forth and doing everything for everyone else all the time. I think mm -hmm. that's a very isolating way to live. Yeah. And so to have this group of people that you can reach out to and find things in common with, you know, uh, talking about who didn't sleep last night. Okay that sucks. How are we going to cope with this now? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I've tried this before and it really worked or, you know, uh, why don't we try this, you know, tonight when, before you go to sleep, drink this tea or whatever. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a silly, goofy example, but, um, you know, just the, the support from the group, the one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one support with you. And I don't know if you're offering that through shameless manifestation, but if, if you're not, uh, I would tell anybody to sign up for one-on-ones with you because that one, I think we've had maybe two mm -hmm. or three one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and those changed my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that those, I would suggest that anyone who is joining shameless manifestation or considering joining shameless manifestation, mm -hmm. sign up for a one-on-one. -on -one with Millie because it literally saved my life. I, oh my I, goodness. Yeah. I'm I, blushing. I'm yeah. blushing. <laughs> um, no, but when, when you, when you really lack direction, you need someone with, with wisdom and with an energy that you connect with to help you see things in a new way and, and show you a different perspective. And, and you've done that for me. And so, and, and the, the other women in the group, I think that really helps us to see things from all different perspectives. And some of them we'll connect with and some of them maybe not as much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm the oldest woman in the group. <laughs> so a lot of people are facing, you know, different challenges with like really young children, um, you know, my youngest is 13 mm -hmm. and he's super independent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I do sleep through the night. <laughs> so I, I didn't, I put my time in. I did. You, did. you already I did. served your time. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had uh, one of my sons didn't sleep through the night for six years. Oh goodness. Yeah. 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 So, Yeah. I, I know that the common humanity piece is a big part of self-compassion, right? So I think that that's what you're, um, you're hitting on when you're talking about like the support from the group, which is so and connection, the connection. The connection. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, so and true. the acceptance too, right? Because if you're feeling, um, in, insecure, or if you're feeling like you're the only one who's going through something and you're afraid to put yourself out there, maybe at your workplace or in your community or even with your family members, 
here's a group of women who are all in the same boat and you can put yourself out there with them yeah. and you get full acceptance and support. It's a very safe space, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So question for you then, because, you know, there's information in the program and there's friendship and community and connection, but why do you think that this specific mixture of ingredients uh, brings, brings you to a place of lasting change, whereas, you know, if you just picked up a self-help book and read it by yourself, like a lot of people do that and they never change, mm -hmm. you know, why do you think that is? I think it's just what you said. I think you need, you need the confidence, you need the self-compassion, you need that, that sense of worthiness. That's not going anywhere. I'm never going to allow myself to ever uh, be in a position again, where I don't feel worthy of the, the life that I want for myself mm -hmm. and for my, my family, uh, the connection, the community. I think that's what keeps you going. Once you have those things sort of ingrained inside you. Um, and I know you want to stay away from wholehearted, but you know, you, once all of that's in your heart, yes, it doesn't go away. It doesn't exactly. go away. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I hear you and I agree with you. And I'm curious to know, because like these concepts that we're dealing with here inside the program, like self-compassion and worthiness and whatnot, they're really big lofty concepts, you know, like these are things that people hear about all the time and they're like, yeah, I know I need that. That sounds nice. What do you think it is about the program specifically that's different that makes these concepts understandable, accessible, implementable, and like you said, ingrained inside of you, you know, like people are like, well, how can I become more worthy? That feels like, you know, something to grasp at. How do I do that? What do you think it is about the program that makes that possible? I, th I think it's, it's mostly the way you've designed it. <laughs> so <laughs> kudos. Thank you. Because it's, it's, you know, you take everybody through step by step and each step builds on the previous one. And it's, you know, it's similar to the way that, that I would hope to teach a course at mm -hmm. school. You know, you start with one concept and then you build on it and it becomes more and more complex and you review and you make connections with the content and your own life. And I think it's probably those, those real wor world connections, those, okay, now go out and try this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think that's what makes the difference is that it's not, it's not all lofty. It's not all out in space. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's very attainable. You just mm -hmm. have to take that first step and then the second step and each one builds on the next and and you end up on a journey mm -hmm. and and the journey is what stays with you I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it, it, it's it's like the exactly it's the process it's your story evolving um so for you now that you have these tools and you have these skills, because that's really the way I look at them. I, I look at it as I'm teaching people skills and I, I'm giving them tools. So now that you have these things, like what is your data? Like, how's your day-to-day -day different? How has your life changed as a result of the program? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so many changes. So I, um, I made some big big decisions. Uh, if you want to talk about, um, you know, uh, actions, taking action, then that's really, um, I would say the, the biggest, the two biggest actions that I took were uh, buying a house. You -hoo. I know, right? Mm -hmm. And now, well, you know, I'll, I'll get to this part after, but I'm not I'm not doing it on my own anymore, but when I started, 
it, I was. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started out purchasing a home, like custom building a home um, by myself on my own. And that was just such a huge financial move for me. And still so proud of myself. Yes, <laughs> still proud that of is myself for incredible. that. Incredible. Congratulations. Especially in, and in today's market, right? It's yeah, it's insane. So yeah. an actually really neat thing is that from my bedroom window, I can see the apartment that I lived in. Oh, no yeah. way. Yeah, which my one of my sons came over and he said, Don't you feel kind of like icky when you look back and you see that? old apartment you lived in and I said no I feel proud mm -hmm. that's like a reminder of where I was now it wasn't an icky apartment it was a luxury apartment <laughs> <laughs> but you know just still to go from renting to buying I said that's a reminder every day of how hard I worked for this mm -hmm. you know and yeah. so that's that aligned action that um yeah. I decided well I'm in the middle of maybe changing my mind or not, I'm not sure, but I decided that maybe I might want someday a promotion at work. I like mm -hmm. to go into administration and not spend the rest of my career in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So I took action. I signed up for courses that would get me to uh, that promotion. Mm -hmm. So I'm halfway through that process, kind of took a break because of the personal stuff and the the, you know, finances of getting settled into a new home and mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, kind of now, when do I want to schedule this next piece into my mm -hmm. life? Yeah. Um, you, you're allowed to reevaluate desires at any moment, you know, that's right. That's right. And, and then I, I look to at some of the, you know, the icky kind of bureaucracy stuff and I think oh do I really want that because right. that's the other side of it right is you've got this bureaucracy and I want to get into it because I want to help students one-on-one -on -one. I want to mm -hmm. counsel them I want to coach them I want to work with families and and help their students succeed mm -hmm. um, but then there's the all this icky stuff on the other side of it where you have to deal with politics and all that other mm -hmm. so I don't know I'm still considering it I but in the past I wouldn't have even admitted that I thought I had the skill set to mm -hmm. do that so that's yeah. kind of a big deal um uh, and then you know moving one one sec hold on I just want to acknowledge something right there too even the fact that you have the ability to to pause and reevaluate that whole thing is is a very big development in, in your you know your growth as well because most of the time people like they'll say well well I want this thing you know this external thing which is like a new title of promotion right and they'll just go headlong for it because they think that when they arrive at that destination they're going to get something they're going to feel a certain way and that's going to make them feel worthy or more valuable or whatever whatever right and here you are taking pause and evaluating how you want to feel along the way you know you're you're like you're giving it more consideration like why do i want this right like even that in it in and of itself is really important an important skill to be able to to have so congratulations on that <laughs> too yes that self reflection is is really key that's mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. um constantly reevaluating goals and and dreams and and desires uh, because and and accepting that they can change and that that's okay mm -hmm. because you know oh maybe I wanted a sports car well then how much pressure am I going to put on myself to buy that sports car mm -hmm. you know maybe something else comes along I'd rather take this vacation yeah. right and and you know so does giving up on that sports car dream does that say something bad about me no mm -hmm. I mean we're we one thing about women we're allowed to change our minds <laughs> yeah right <laughs> we can give ourselves permission to change our minds yeah but uh, um yeah and then on uh, you know the more the more magical side of things I would say you know the more personal side of things I 
manifested uh, a relationship. And I think it's from, uh, it was, I don't want to say, uh, I forget what the activity was called the, that you walked us through. Maybe you can remind me where you close your eyes and you picture yourself in like 30 years and then you look back. Do you know what? You know I what think, I'm talking about. I think it was the probably the goal installation. The goal, like the blue, we did like the future goal installation. Was it the one where we dropped it into the timeline? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that's what it's called. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of something. I was confusing with something else because I have so many notes. Yeah. But um, yeah, when I did that, I just, I, I wasn't really picturing a professional goal or a financial goal. I was picturing a, sort of a, a life goal. I was, I kept picturing um, a, a family and, and, you know, a lake house, um, which is sounds like a financial goal, but like being surrounded by family at a lake house mm -hmm. and celebrating something like a you know, a wedding or an anniversary or graduation or something like that. And that's mm -hmm. what I kept picturing. And the person that I kept picturing next to me was not someone who I had even thought of in my life for, you know, months, if not years. Mm -hmm. So, but someone from my past. Mm -hmm. And um, strangely enough, within um, you know, days of that goal installation, I got an email mm. from him. I know. Wow. It is wild. so magical. Yeah, it is. It is. And now we are, we're a family. We're living together and, and our kids are here and it's absolutely wonderful. It's, it's dreamy. And I couldn't have imagined that I would never have set that goal for myself because I never it never would have crossed my mind if I hadn't you know participated in the program if I hadn't gone to the you know done the work figured out the uh or not the, not, not the work but let that manifestation just flow and be in the energy of of what I wanted and I I never would have found that mm -hmm. if I didn't if I hadn't been involved in the program so well I'm beyond happy for you I mean I designed the program to be equal parts like tangible tools realistic things that we could implement ways to break down these lofty concepts but also equal parts you know magic and and you know tapping into the infinite realm of potential and possibility all done so in a way that doesn't make us feel like there's these unrealistic, you know, uh, standards we have to hold ourselves to, or, um, you know, all this pressure to do all this kind of journaling and rituals and routines and, and stuff that, that feels like overwhelming for a lot of people who already have a lot on their plate, especially moms with, you know, young kids and taking care of, you know, maybe parents and stuff like that too. So just reflecting back, would you say that that was accurate in your experience? Absolutely. I, I can't, I can't imagine one piece without the other. Um, definitely there is a practical aspect, but if what you're looking for is something, um, you know, more personal, then I think all of those elements get intertwined and they, they're all part of the program. And, and I think that as a participant in the program, as you go through it, you almost design it for yourself because mm -hmm. you're figuring out who you are, what you desire, what the actions you're going to take are towards these desires. You're learning about the power of manifestation and all of those things come into, they all culminate into results mm -hmm. and you know like 
personal results, practical results, financial, professional, anything that you, where, where you put your focus, that's what grows, mm -hmm. right? So you have the opportunity within the program, the freedom within the program to take from it what you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you see yourself using the skills and using the, um, like the materials and the videos and things like that, like over again? Always. Yes. Uh, if I'm having a, a low day, I, I don't want to, I don't know how to explain <laughs> when I'm feeling down yes. <laughs> and I, and I don't have, I feel like I don't have a lot of motivation. I will remind myself about self-compassion and I will go through and I will find one of your podcasts or I will find the video where we discussed, where we met and discussed it live in the group mm -hmm. where I will, I will go back to the lesson on self-compassion. I will go back to Brene Brown's work mm -hmm. and I'll, you know, I'll listen to a chapter. I'll, you know, meditate on it. And I don't mean meditate in the sense of like yoga. Um, I, you know, I just, I, I just really mean think on it and feel mm -hmm. on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that those two pieces, the emotional piece and the intellectual piece are just both so important. Um, you know, because we are emotional feeling thinking beings. And so we mm -hmm. need to allow ourselves both, you know, both of those things and to be mm -hmm. able to go back and listen and just be reminded. And that's yeah. why, I, that's why I joined the course for the second time was because I was feeling like, oh, maybe this isn't working. Maybe I didn't get it. Maybe I missed something the first time around, uh, you know, and I thought, no, I'm, I'm, I was, I was headed in the right direction. I don't know what happened. So I got to get in there again mm -hmm. <laughs> and just give myself a refresher. Mm -hmm. And I think that you could go over it over and over and over and you'd get something greater and greater each time. Like I know that these are the questions that I come back to personally to continue elevating my life. And it's very, very, very impactful and, and effective. So what would you say to somebody who's curious about the program and thinking about it? What would you say to that person? Text me, girl. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. Well, no, we'll, um, we'll give them your Instagram handle so they can send you a DM. I'm not sure I'm going to put your phone number in the show notes. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, yeah, I I would say what whatever is holding you back, don't let it. Don't be afraid to put yourself first. Don't be afraid to take that, you know, take that first step because I just think that you're worth it. Uh, your family is worth it. Your future is worth it. Um, you know, your you as a professional, you as a parent, you as a, as a person, the, you deserve this. This is just something that, that I wish everyone had in their life. I wish everybody had a coach in their life who they could turn to, you know, we have friends and we have family members and sometimes we have colleagues that we can go to for advice, but it's not the same as having that outside perspective because everyone who's, who's really close to us, they, they share our bias, I think, right? Mm -hmm. right? A little you bit know, too, too close leave, to leave that guy or, yeah. you know, have that third baby or whatever, right? People are too close. And, right. and I think that you need that, that impartial um, guide. Mm -hmm. I think that's really helpful. And I also think that the program helps women to become their own guide. Mm. And, and and also to be able to guide other people, um, you know, as far as the community that you've built mm -hmm. with, 
you know, with the women. So I, I just, I think that, that if you really want things to change in your life, you need to be the one to take that first step. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if this program is calling to you at all, you can't wait, you've got to do it now because you, you will only regret <laughs> if you, if you wait, if you put it off, you're only going to have regrets of, you know, how much my life could have changed, how much earlier my life could have changed, how much sooner I could have been, you know, happier, accepted mm -hmm. myself, um, you know, let some of that trauma go. I, that, I know that's a whole new topic that I didn't mean to address, but you know, all, all those, all those topics that we delve so deeply into, I think that, you know, if, if you, if you find yourself really craving something more, this is where to find it. And this is, this is your next step. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. And I know there's a lot of self-help stuff available out there right now. There's a lot of online courses and coaches popping up like, you know, <laughs> groundhogs like everywhere <laughs> right now. I know the pandemic brought out this whole new set of coaches. What do you think is different about what do you think makes this program different than anything else you've seen? I, th I think that um, your program feels attainable. To me, uh, first of all, you as a person, you feel like someone I could sit down and have a drink with and have laughs and have dinner. Oh, right? yeah. And that, <laughs> right, which we have plans to do. Yes, we will. <laughs> we have plans. But uh, I think. I think that, you know, when you see these um, coaches that have, you know, 10 million followers or something crazy like that, and to me, they, they don't seem real. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of advertisements for coaches, right? And I find they don't seem real. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that, that, um, you know, a really, uh, you can't make a connection with someone that you don't feel like you could sit down and have a drink with. Yeah. You, know? you, can't, rel I, you can't relate to them. No. And so, and you're relatable. Um, but you are also, you have so many qualities that I think that, that women aspire to have as well. So, oh. so you're someone that I can relate to, but who I can also admire. And you can be a role model as well as being relatable. And so you, you are the coach, but you're also the expander, if that you're makes so, sense. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're Thank welcome. You so much. Um, I appreciate you so much, Melanie, honestly and truly. Like, I'm so happy for you and everything that you've, you know, achieved for yourself. And it really is for yourself, right? Because you get out of things, whatever you put into them and you went in um, with your whole heart and, and that's why you achieved what you achieved. And so that's amazing and beautiful and fills my heart. Um, and to finish up here, first of all, thanking you again for, for coming, but I always ask the same question at the end of every one of my podcasts, every guest is, what are you currently manifesting? I am manifesting a Land Rover. <laughs> all righty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, that's what it. I'm, that's what I'm currently manifesting. Yep. i I just, you know, it's time. I've always driven a safe, practical car. And, you know, now that we have the home and, you know, we're, well, I sh should also say manifesting a wedding, but mm -hmm. I, I already know that's happening. So I just have to plan it. I'm only planning that. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, I think that's my next big. That's exciting. And I'm kind of, I'm a little surprised, but not really. Like I'm excited for you. That's fun. I Well, I used to think that I, that I didn't deserve it or that it would be uh, selfish or that it would be, um, you know, too materialistic. Mm-hmm. And now I don't care. I want a nice car. <laughs> You're allowed to want what you want. That's exactly. It. Exactly. Well, thank you so much again and again and again. I really appreciate your time and for coming on here and chatting to the beautiful people. I'm going to put the link to Melanie's Instagram underneath. Should you want to reach out for any reason, um, you can do that. And thank you guys for listening. Is there any last words you'd like to share, Melanie? Uh, just if you're listening to this podcast, go back and listen to all the others. Um, I know that Millie is just someone that, um, I vibe with Mm -hmm. and I know that, um, I know that you Millie have so much to offer. And I think that we just need to, you know, get more people to to learn from you and to learn what I've learned and what I'm still learning from you. And I think that the more, I I love your philosophy that healed women will heal the world. Mm -hmm. And, And that's how I feel. That's how I felt about going into administration and, and, you know, helping children heal. And I, I still feel that way with, with my classrooms, but I just think, you know, listen to Millie, listen, (laughs) see if you vibe, see if you vibe, you know, not everyone's going to vibe with you, but, but see if you do. And, and if you do take that leap and, you know, join me, Join mm-hmm. me in the next course because I will be in it. <laughs> I guarantee you will. I'll be there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, we, we never stop learning and we should never feel like we're stuck because mm-hmm. there's always a way out. There's always, there's an, always an, option. A, an option. There's always a, a different direction for your journey. Mm hmm. Totally. And on that note of, uh, you know, helping more women get into this world, one of the best ways that you can do that with this podcast is either sharing an episode to your social media and or liking or sorry, um, subscribing, rating and reviewing for me. The rating and reviewing is extra, extra appreciated. So thank you again so much. And we will catch you on the next show.